Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I really do appreciate you guys clicking on yet another video of mine. So I posted on Instagram that I was going to do one about how I almost died having my son. And I'm definitely going to do that one. I just don't know if I'm ready to do that one yet. It's going to be really, really, really emotional for me. <clears throat> so I've started this new series and we're going to see how it goes. But I'm going to do the first one with myself and then I'm going to start interviewing other moms. Um, and we're going to ask questions. So for my next mom video, I'm going to need you guys to ask questions in the comments, please, because I had to scour the internet. Um, and I pulled them off of a couple websites, one parenting website and the other one, I'm not quite sure what it was, but I'll put it in the description if I can find it. I'll put the links there. Um, so anyway, this is welcome to my new series. It's called ask some moms. <laughs> so these are questions that I got. Please do excuse the whole back there. Um, <laughs> somebody going to notice. So I'm just going to say it. Anyway, these are some questions that I found from two different websites. And so I'm going to go ahead and read them. Um, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and my two cents on it. So, um, number one is breastfeeding. So there's some people for breastfeeding, some people who don't care and some people who are Nazis about it. Um, so it says that it is recommended that you exclusively breastfeed your child for the first six months of life and you can add passies and stuff like that later. Um, but it did say, I want to quote, it did say in there that, um, if you were not enjoying it, if it was causing you more anxiety and depression, that it is totally okay to give them some formula in a bottle. And I really want to address that for a minute. Um, so, um, my first son, Zion, who is getting ready to turn eight in December, um, I breastfed, breastfed him for the first four months of life. Um, I tried after that and I just didn't have it in me. And a lot of it was, um, we hadn't established a routine. We hadn't established a pattern. A lot of it was our lives. I was go, 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 go all the time. Um, and a lot of it was just immaturity and I really wasn't really ready to be a mom. Like I was married and everything, but I, I just, I was still a kid. Um, and so I beat myself up for a long time about that. So, um, fast forward 18 months later when me and Rudy welcome Zion, I mean, welcome Landon into the world. Um, I breastfed him exclusively for 10 months, almost a year. And the only reason I quit is because I had a job as a CNA and I could not leave the woman that I was in charge of because she needed 24 hour care. I could not leave her while I was on shift to go and breastfeed. Pumping is just the pits for me. Um, I don't mind having a baby right there, but pumping is, is just tedious. It's not my thing. Um, and so, um, with PJ, we only got to about five months. Um, and a lot of it was that I had had surgery. I also had surgery with Zara and I had a C-section, but you know, with PJ, I almost died, um, because my uterus ruptured. Um, and so they kind of were giving him formula and breast milk right off the bat. It wasn't just exclusively breast milk. Um, and so I'm really still dealing with the fact that, um, he's just on formula now. Um, we don't breastfeed anymore and I really like it. It's really a bonding experience for me. Um, and I'm having some depression and anxiety about that because I'm beating myself up, but I'm here to tell you guys that we shouldn't beat ourselves up. If our babies are happy and healthy, what the hell should it matter? So that's the point in my life where I'm trying to come to. I'm going to start crying. Okay. So... First time moms, this is number two, sterilizing everything. They go through and they sterilize everything. And I can honestly tell you that um, that lasted for me for about a week before I got fed the heck up. Um, that's a no. <laughs> um, so it said on there um, that um, you can, it's good to sterilize things, but keeping things too clean are just as bad as keeping things too dirty. Your child will not build up immunities and stuff that they need. So they suggest not sterilizing all the time, but just simple wash offs. Um, and that's what they do. And they say not to, if the binky drops on the floor, put it in your mouth and then put it in your child's mouth. There are drawbacks to that. The child could be allergic to something you ate, blah, 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 blah germs, all that jazz. Um, I do it. I don't care. <laughs> It's never hurt my kids. It didn't hurt me. But I mean, that's what they say. Okay, so the third one is holding your child too much. Does it spoil them? Yes. 
Okay, it does. But if you are that type of mom where that's what you do and you, and you cuddle your child and you're very much with your child and all that, mm -hmm. there are wonderful benefits to that. Okay, you should cuddle your child. Children need that stuff, especially babies. Um, but when you're introducing multiple children and you have things to do during the day, if you have a job or if you're a stay-at-home mom like I am and you homeschool, like I just don't have time to hold PJ all day. Like I don't have time to hold myself month old all day long. It's just not going to happen. So, um... I think that you can spoil a child, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Um, I think it just depends on your life and your situation. All right, so number four um, are the jerking motions while they're asleep. So, like, is that normal? All right, so story time. Um, so, Zion, my oldest, when he was born, um, he came into this world very traumatic, not as traumatic as PJ, but very traumatic, and we had noticed some jerky motions. And at first, um, all the medical staff was like, oh no, like, that's totally normal. Um, but then it got worse. So they did inform me that, yes, that that was normal for babies to jerk themselves awake and stuff like that. That is, that's totally normal. So don't freak out. Jerking motions are normal. Um, he was just doing it a lot. And so we we ended up getting him flown to VC, not flown to VCU, um, carted over to VCU, and um, they ran a whole week's worth of tests and a whole bunch of stuff. And come to find out that they were literally it was just jerking motions. He just had them a lot, and he um, was such a uh, I don't know, such a big baby, I guess, that um, it freaks them out because he just he's extra. He does everything, just a whole lot of it, just like his mother. So, okay. Is it okay to wake a baby up out of their sleep? I mean, it depends on the situation. If the house is burning, wake the baby up. Get the baby out. Um, if you have to go grocery shopping, you have to wake the baby up. Like, I, there's just, you cannot, um, just, you cannot be afraid to wake. There's sometimes you can have to wake your child up. Now, the drawback to that is when they don't get a nap out, they're completely cranky. Um, you can always put them back at a later time. And I know people talk about schedules and blah, blah, blah. We don't run around schedules around here. I don't know what a damn schedule is. So, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so, um, there are drawbacks to that. But I say, in my opinion, you do what you gotta do. Um, clothes versus the weather. So you see during the winter time, um, these people have these babies out and they have nothing on. They just have just a onesie and the mama is bundled up and daddy is bundled up and everybody else got coats and hats and jackets and this baby has nothing. And that's irritating. Okay. Your baby cannot regulate their temperature yet. Okay. Other children can regulate their temperature, but still you don't want to give them colds and stuff like they, you wrap your children up. But on the flip side of that, during the summer, your child can also get too hot just like they can get too cold. So you just, if you are hot, your baby's probably hot. If you were cold, your baby's probably cold. Like that's what I normally go off of. And that's what I've heard. And that's what works for us. Um, and your baby's going to let you know your child, they're going to let you know. Okay. <laughs> um, which one of your kids do you like best? Okay. So I grew up with, um, like everything was an even playing field or at least they tried. Um, and my parents didn't pick favorites. Um, I always felt like my mom favored my mom more, but I think that was just my perception at the time. I do not like any one of my children more than the other. Okay. I love them all equally. Um, I think that people get that confused with bonding with a child more. Um, because my middle child landed, we get along better than my oldest one and my youngest one. Like, we just do. I, PJ hadn't been around long enough for me to really tell. But between him and Zai, like, I definitely connect with Landon more on some levels. So that doesn't mean I like him more. You know, like, I connect with Zion more. And different kids, it takes different discipline approaches. Um, so you can't, I don't think you're supposed to have favorites. And I don't. But I think that each child is an individual. And you might feel about them differently than you feel about the other child. And thus, they're different. So you should. Um, have you ever had thoughts like, I, I, I can't do this. I'm done. Like, I, they've driven me crazy today. Bruh, every day, okay? And I want you to know that it's okay. I'm going to sit here and say what the rest of the mothers won't. I can't die. I heard them. Okay? Of being the snack B-I-T-C-H. Like, um, all the time. Can I have this? Can I have that? Like, children are very demanding. All right? And I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it and be like, oh, no. Like, every day is lollipops and sunshines and right... I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? I'm just not going to do it. Um, 
<laughs> I will say though that it's worth it. That everything that I go through, when I'm pulling my hair out, when I'm screaming, when I'm crying, when I've had a bad day, when I want to give up, um, those moments are nothing compared to the cuddles and the I love yous and looking at my children while they sleep and waiting for them to grow up and looking back at pictures and having memories and going places. I wouldn't trade this for, for the world. I, call me crazy. I will be crazy. If that's what it takes to raise them, if I have to have some ah, moments, Oh, well, so be it. We're just going to have those moments. We're just going to. Um, I also think that's life. If you don't have those moments in life, I, you on too much depression medication. I don't know. I'm just joking. All right. Um, so views on young mothers. All right. So it didn't specify, but I think they're talking about teenagers. Now, I was 22 when I had my first child, and I was a young mom, and I wasn't ready. Um, I was married and everything, and I was not ready. So... No matter what your situation is, sometimes you're just not ready. Um, so I think everybody should take parenting seriously. Whether you're 16 or 26, you should take it seriously. Now, I'm not advocating 16-year-olds getting pregnant by any means. I think that 16 and pregnant show took our society to a whole new level of low. Y'all need to stop. Stay in school. Do something with your life, okay? Children are not fashion accessories, and I'm going to leave it at that. So if you're 16 and you made a mistake and you got pregnant and you did what you had to do and you've raised a wonderful child and you're in school now, kudos to you. You're not who I'm talking about. Um, if you're 23 and you already have four kids, um, it's time to hang it up, give up the ghost. Okay. You're, you should be done. <laughs> like at, at 23, you've got a whole lot to do. You should, I'm going to get in trouble for this comment. So, um, so postpartum depression, um, it's a thing. It's real. I've heard different reports that it can last up for two years after the child is born. Um, it compounds with already, um, pre-existing mental illnesses. Um, and I suffer from those. So I always suffer from depression and anxiety anyway. And postpartum has made it a whole lot worse for me. And it's a thing. So if you need help, there's no shame in that. And don't let anybody sit there and tell you, um, it should be gone in a certain amount of time because everyone is an individual. And so if you need help, if you need medication, you need medication. If you need a counselor, you need a counselor. Like if you need somebody to talk to, you need somebody to talk to you and you shouldn't feel ashamed. Um, because everybody goes through it to a certain extent and people's levels vary of what they can put up on and what they can't and how depressed they are and you know like it's just it de depends on a um individual level um hardest part of being a parent hardest part of being a parent is putting a, the child's needs before your own um i believe personally in my personal opinion that human beings are just selfish by nature we just are um and sometimes there's nothing wrong with that to a certain extent, but when you have a child, it's no longer about you and it's about that child. So for me, that's the hardest part is just having to constantly do and do and do and do and do. Now, I still need to make time for me and I'm working on that. Um, but definitely is putting the child's needs before your own. It, it's a constant thing. Um, and so I don't know, I'm going to be real with you guys and be like, sometimes I don't want to do that. You know? Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I want to sleep in. Sometimes I just want to go somewhere on a whim. Um, you know, sometimes I want to do crazy stuff and I can't. You know, sometimes I want to go places and want to spend money on stuff when I can because I have children. Um, but it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make and I'll continue to do so. And the last one is how did you come up with your names? So my children are all named after dead people. <laughs> Uh, somebody told me one time that that's, that's probably not good that I was going to incur some type of bad juju or something. Yeah. Um, so Zion Andrew Cal Johnson, C-A-L. Um, so Zion, my husband came up with, um, we decided to spell it X-I-O-N. Um, uh, Andrew is actually just the middle name that we came up with. And then Cal are my grandfather's initials, Clarence Alfred Lochner. And, um, so it was in the memory of him to honor him. So then Landon, Landon's actual name was supposed to be Dietrich Leviathan. Um, it's a freaking mouthful. Um, but, um, 
there was somebody who died in our hometown and a whole lot of people knew him and he knew my sister and I knew of him and I, I knew family members of his. I didn't really know him all that well, um, but he ended up dying and it was tragic for this community. And so in his memory, um, we named our child Landon Maverick Darren um, because his name is Landon. So um, then we have PJ. Richard Marcus Parker. Sounds like a whole bank, right? So my dad, his name is Richard. So he's named after my dad. Marcus is my mom's best friend. He's been very influential in my life. He's like an uncle, so Uncle Mark. And then Parker, which is my husband's father, um, who is deceased. And so he's named after him. And to fully, totally encapsulate, I'm going to totally edit that. <laughs> Um, in memory, we call him PJ. So anyway, this was my video for today. Um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Um, please, any questions that you want to, with the Ask Some Moms series, I haven't really decided on the name yet. I think it's Ask Some Moms. So anyway, I'll let you know if that changes. Mwah! Love, peace, chicken grease, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.